Coming in at number nine, The Best of Me. So The Best of Me is the latest Nicholas Sparks adaptation and it proves that officially they are scraping the bottom of the Nicholas Sparks novel barrel. I understand that Nicholas Sparks movies are this ultimate paint by numbers formula and I can sit through a film that does a paint by numbers story and at least tries to give you that. But to give me a half-assed story this conclusion is just so vomit-inducing is just too low of a bar, even for Nicholas Sparks. Coming in at number 8, Safe Haven. It's hard to believe that this wasn't just a Valentine's Day cash grab. Sparks' Safe Haven follows a runaway woman who lands in North Carolina and finds friendship with a widower. Julianne Huff and Josh Demel do what they can in the lead roles. The movie for the most part is a very unbelievable and pretty boring story. It's one that is forgettable and has you asking yourself what is it that you watched again. All of the film's core problems make this movie almost unwatchable. Coming in at number 7, Knights and Rondoff. Knights and Rondoff proves that love comes in all forms and from often unexpected people. It follows the tale of two people who desperately need each other at a particular moment in their lives. The film is one of those movies that proves that casting great actors like Richard Gere and Diane Lane does not always guarantee a good movie. The film is boring and focuses on the estranged son aspect and less on the main romance, leaving the audience wondering if watching it is a complete waste of time. Coming in at number 6, Message in a Bottle. The first of the Sparks novels to make its way to the big screen, Message in a Bottle sees Kevin Costner and Reverend Wright attempt to salvage a film with horrible directing and a mediocre score. Its core focus is about a woman attempting to track down the author of a love letter she found inside of a bottle on the beach. It explores the notion that it is better to have loved and lost than to never have loved at all. Coming in at number 5, The Last Song. For the first time in Nicholas Sparks' career, he wrote the screenplay before the novel. Disney approached Sparks with the idea for a vehicle to get their pop princess Miley Cyrus into theaters as quickly as possible. The film that also starred the lesser known Hemsworth brother, Liam, is about a rebellious teen sent to live with her father for the summer. This one is very different than any of the other Sparks movies, having a strong focus on the relationship between the teen and her father, played by Greg Kinnear. Their relationship plays as big a part in the film as the summer romance itself. Not all bad, the acting and the story for the most part are pretty okay. It's just another one of those films that you forget you watched it soon after it came out. Coming in at number 4, Dear John. Channing Tatum plays John, a soldier carrying a long distance relationship with Amanda Seyfried's character, Savannah. Basically a concept about a college student and a soldier who fall in love during his two week leave. The plot is less than engaging but it does deliver us some really cool twist ending that most people don't normally see in a Nick Sparks film. The acting by Tatum and Seyfried actually work a long way. Add in some other notable actors and the film is pretty watchable. Coming in at number 3, A Walk to Remember. A classic tale of young love and redemption, A Walk to Remember is a cheesy yet somehow still tear-jerking drama about two North Carolina teens who fall in love and are forced to deal with very adult situations. Mandy Moore and Shane West do the best they can with a mediocre script. The score is pretty good and the story overall is actually pretty meaningful. It's one of those films that has come to have a very strong female following and many females can't help but grab the tissue box during the entire film. Coming in at number 2, The Lucky One. A haunting tale of a man who clings to a singular vision in order to survive, the lucky one brings a now grown up Zac Efron into a more adult role. The story about a marine in search of a woman he believes was his good luck charm during the war, it's one of Nicholas Sparks' most believable movies with a dark backdrop of the Iraq war. It's one of the few Nicholas Sparks movies that won't bore you as you're watching it and you won't regret after you've seen it. Zac Efron and his co-star Orange is the New Black's Taylor Schilling have an interesting chemistry and make the film work a lot more than it needed. Coming in at number 1. The Notebook. This should come as no surprise. Clearly the most watchable and most popular of the Nicholas Sparks novels, The Notebook was the breakout movie role for Ryan Gosling and Rachel McAdams. Although not a box office smash, the film found a second life on DVD, cable, and Blu-ray. It is an epic heartbreaking tale of the lasting power of one's first and true love. One of those movies that as a man you are not afraid to admit you actually really like it. The Notebook is not only one of the best Nicholas Sparks movies, it's actually one of the better romantic dramas of all time. At least, in my account. Well, there you have it, folks. My favorite Nicholas Sparks movies, for whatever that's worth. As always, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. And always realize that these are my lists. Not the necessarily the best movies of all time. Or necessarily the best anything of all time. These are my favorite. I just like throwing best on there because to me, these are the best. These are the best Nicholas Sparks movies to me. If you disagree, make sure you guys comment below with your top seven, eight, nine list of Nicholas Sparks movies. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. Check out Geeked Out Nation for the full written top list. And I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.